On this episode, we talk about daily rituals, Facebook following count, and what do you do when you have too much business? This is Gary Vaynerchuk, and this is episode 117 of the Ask Gary V Show. Super pumped, 117. We got a full house in here. Sid, white space. I, I don't know if you guys saw what I just said. I re-nicknamed you, Sid. Um, uh, <laughs> Stunwin, let's show Stunwin. We haven't seen, Stunwin has, you know, little OG action. I know you made a little cameo in the D-Rock film that came out. I work ridiculously hard. I work obnoxiously smart. Uh, and uh, I'm super excited about that. Uh, fired up, I was on the West Coast. So uh, no episodes this week. Uh, so we did some best of stuff, obviously the behind the scenes thing. So I'm really excited. I've got a lot of energy. Oh, Indy, I sent you like three questions just now via email. You also sent me like 10 last week. Which was I know. Like, so it's been, an, it's been an intense. Uh, it's been, an, it's been fun. Uh, but I want some of these that okay. I just sent you, so hack along the way here in real time. Uh, and uh, appreciate all of you. Uh, so India, let's get into the show. Let's get into the show. Niles asks, why doesn't Gary Vee read books? Doesn't he see the value while he writes books himself? Anils, I, I don't read books because of a couple things. One, I'm very inefficient at reading, uh, so it takes me a long, long time. And the truth is, I don't think I actually grasp what I read. As a matter of fact, something very interesting has happened over the last six to eight months here at Vayner Media. When I see that something comes in my inbox that's a very important piece of business, and it's a very long email, AKA more than 18 words, I call a five minute meeting, because in five minutes, and my staff will tell you, like, uh, you won't see the body language here, but I'm saying it for them. It's insane. In a meeting, I basically don't even let people finish saying what they're saying because I've grasped it. But if they sent me that same comment in four sentences, I literally wouldn't even know what was going on. And so uh, I don't read because I don't think it's an efficient uh, transaction of transforming information into my brain. I really don't. Audio books is something I need to take very seriously. Um, But the truth is I don't read because the way I like to consume information is living it. I know that sounds weird, but it's just the truth. I really do think the reason that I've been able to be an anomaly is I know that that's probably not the norm. Most people do read books. You know, like uh, as a matter of fact, it's crazy that the internet came along because if the internet hadn't come along, I wouldn't have written or read in my life. Like I was well on my way. If I was, you know, if I, you know, I'm sure there's some. 50 to 80 year olds who are watching the show right now or listening to the show who are like me who realize holy crap they really didn't write or read from like 24 to like 45 pre-internet stuff so uh, I write books um, because I know so many people do read. I know so many people do learn from highlighting the shit out of the book. Uh, I don't and so you can't be religious or romantic about these things. Just because I write them doesn't mean I need to read them and vice versa and so the reason I don't do it is because I don't find value in it for me and I highly recommend a lot of you start really auditing yourself and understanding are you doing stuff that actually doesn't bring any value to you just because that's what society and the world and you have always done because the answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> Raymond asks, what daily rituals do you practice to keep focused? Uh, Raymond, that's a good question. Daily rituals to keep focused. Uh, you know, now that I'm a year and two days into my physical regimen, uh, that is uh, what you would think is one of the things I do, but I don't. I do not find that my working out has done anything for me mentally. I really don't. I don't feel any different mentally today than I did a year ago. Uh, I don't sleep better. The only thing that's happened is I just look way better. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that's that. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other, I'll probably live a lot longer. Um, you know, there's that thing. Uh, uh, I feel much stronger, by the way. Traveling is where I'm really feeling it. Like, pick, like just little silly things, like grabbing my, you know, like my suitcase. Um, I think I only have one ritual, which is uh, 
in parallel to the way I live my life, even right now as I'm talking to you guys, there's a little part of my brain that's always moving. It's just like, think of it as like a hamster wheel and it's always just reminding myself to keep things in perspective, right? I think my daily ritual, uh, how was the question phrased again, India? phrased daily rituals to keep me focused. To keep me focused. I think the one thing that keeps me focused is the perspective of understanding how lucky I am, how good life really is, how the things I complain about are, are not that big of a deal in the scheme of things, how at moments notice I can get a text right now while filming this show and have the tragedy of my life happen and, and every second that doesn't happen, how thankful I should be for that because those are real scenarios. These are things that you and so many of us deal with on a daily basis. Now that I have a 530 person company Company. you know, HR sends me an email inevitably every week to two weeks of very scary things like people's families uh, having tragedies of death or people being diagnosed with illness, like just real stuff, real stuff. I am stunningly capable outside of New York Jets football to understand in check, in emotion, how, how nothing, <laughs> like that, how 99% of things don't matter. Um, and so my daily ritual is actually my ritual that I keep at an every second, it's my moments, every second ritual of keeping myself in check to recognizing what is important versus what's not. Sure, I get frustrated and concerned and worried, but it never has a sustained level of, uh, of a feeling um, because I just put things in perspective so well. I'm so thankful for that gear. I really wish I knew how to teach it. I think the only thing I try to do is put it out to you guys. I'm hoping that somebody's like, geez, that seems like, they're really, I hope you're looking at me or listening to me right now and saying, geez, that sounds fun. You're right, it is. Like, like I'm a very outrageously, stunningly, over the top, happy person because of this gear. It is very difficult for me to have sustained unhappiness because of this vehicle. Um, and it also allows me, and I really do believe this, allows me to affect the people around me, whether they're consuming me on a daily basis or they work with me, to actually level themselves. Stunwin, as someone who I find very cynical oh and different than me, okay. straight up, no bullshit, because I don't care and you know that. Mm -hmm. Don't bullshit me. Okay. Do you feel yes. that this, how, how long have we been jamming together now? 18 months, like where are we at now? Like very close. Two, two, a little over two years. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> in these two years, do you feel that you, the answer, I don't know how much you were listening, you seemed like you were working, which is a nice change of pace. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, Gary. Sama, do you feel, no bullshit, no okay. bullshit, do right. you feel that you've moved at any level to be more optimistic, bigger perspective, Oh, happier. Absolutely. Oh, forget Talk it. Talk about it. So, uh -huh. I, I know it because I can see it from afar, so I'm pumped <laughs> to hear that. But I'm curious how you quantify it. Like, how, how much, or how, or what, or talk? I would say that the the thing that you all that you say that resonated with me the most is is the whole like you're 100 percent in control of your situation and to like don't bitch about it. Like grab it and You've change changed it. in that way. Yeah, in a big way. Like, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. I think about you three years ago. You complained more. I complained a lot. Yeah. No, really. Yeah. And you feel more in control. A hundred percent. Yeah. If I have a problem, it's everything is fixable as opposed to. And talk to me, and Elizabeth, as somebody who's. When did you start watching Wine Library TV? Two thousand seven, I think. The difference of being this. Cl do you, so you said. The, I listened very carefully. I'm a good listener. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing you said that resonated with me. You followed me for a long time. Mm -hmm. How long have you been at VaynerMedia? Uh, three years this month. Great. So for almost a full year, you weren't as inner circle with me. Mm -hmm. Was it, the, was it watching the execution of that non-complaining that triggered it? Or was it just momentum or what? It I'm was, trying to figure out, the no, no, I get what it. I want to do for them yeah. is what's the difference between what they are experiencing, which is what you experience, which is yeah. you're listening to it, yeah. versus clearly being able to see it in real life. Like, you see all the, ins you're in my inbox, you know the insanity that I, you know. Yeah, I know what it is. Okay. It's, it's, it's that you encourage people to, to take control of the situation and what happens is the first time somebody actually acts on that and says, I have a problem with this person and instead of bitching and complaining about it, they actually take control of the situation and they say, hey, this is a problem, how do we fix it? People are afraid to do that. They think it's gonna backfire. They think I'm not allowed to give that person feedback or I'm not allowed to act on this because it's not my job or I'm not senior enough or whatever. And the first time you do it and it doesn't backfire and it actually works because you asked for what you wanted, it's like, oh shit, that's actually really empowering. And let me teach you about scale. That's, ex that's awesome. And then what I know, and I'm gonna give you a little love here, is going from 
that, what he just said, which is complaining and not doing anything about it, to the next step, which is doing something about it. But what Steve has done, unlike others, and I'm super pumped they're just doing it, what Steve has done that I've noticed is not only that, then empowering others to do the same. And that, my friends, is scale. That, my friends, is how you go from a small base to a big base when you are so religious and you suffocate all the wrong and you try to teach and you have people that level up to it so that saves you time but then some break through and actually teach it as well and help me scale it and know how much of a religion it is, that's when you start really scaling it. And that's, who the hell knows how we got to this point, I don't even remember the question, the daily ritual, that's my ritual. And not only is it my ritual, it's my religion, it's my passion and it is probably fundamentally why I do this damn show because I'm so desperate for you guys to do the same because it's just way better. Is right. Yeah. <laughs> got, intense, got intense here. What's that? Is Mir- Meerkat? What's up? The cat. Is there a Meerkat in here? Probably not. Uh, they liked it, Andrew. Was yeah, that like they did? They felt it. They felt a lot. Of, they were saying uh, they're pretty happy. <laughs> you have to I didn't shave. Oh, God. It is insane. They like seeing someone. Oh, that's good. Me too. All right. Oh. You like seeing yourself? Gary, I'm. I, I'm Majored in acting. I I get it, I get it. Uh, I hate seeing myself. (laughs) You're right. I'm joking, I live for it. (laughs) That's why I do the show, I'm kidding. (laughs) By Brownrig asks, all right Gary Vee, you're big on authentic marketing, but when does it go from building trust with the audience to shit man, that's TMI. Too much information. Um, So I, I don't think we, the people that put out the content, get to judge what TMI is. I think the consumer judges what's too much information. And so, as you can think now and let your whole mind go, you've got all sorts of people that are, whether in social or real mainstream media, that you deem put out too much information or not enough information. And so I'm a big fan of the market deciding. And I think the way you learn how the market decides is to listen to the market. For me, you put out stuff and you see what they come back to. For example, there's a Vine that I put out where I'm sitting in a toilet. Danny, the craziest place I find is this. This. That might have been too M- TMI for people. Uh, you know, I did it because I'm curious of what too TMI is. And I think one, I think it breaks down to two things. Number one, the market decides, right? Like, and we've seen that, right? I mean, you've seen, no question, there was a time and period where people thought Elvis shaking his hips was too much information. I would call that tame compared to what Miley Cyrus did at the MTV Music Awards 18 months ago. I would consider that tame to what XYZ is gonna do six years from now on whatever we're paying, on a Netflix show, right? So like, live show, right? Like, and so like, I think that um, things evolve, the market evolves, but, I really think of this as nothing in the middle. The market decides, and then you get to decide. We've referenced kind of the, you know, it's been funny, this, we had a, an episode where I really got hardcore about my family thing, um, and it's been bubbling up. I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from a lot of friends and family about how little I put out on Misha and Xander and Lizzie and how I do keep my family life pretty private in the scheme of how TMI I am. Um, you know, I decided that. Lizzie decided that. We decided that. Um, and the occasional picture would be fun and, and would never be deemed as to TMI, but we decided that is for us TMI. And so I think you deeply have to be authentic to what's right for you. You can't force it, right? Like, you know, like, you just can't force it. Like, I would definitely, maybe about another year, maybe in another 18 months, I definitely am gonna give a keynote without my shirt on. (laughs) Many would deem that as too TMI. Yet, you probably won't see Xander until he's like 17, right? So I mean like, it's just, you've gotta decide and then the market decides, right? Like if people are engaging with your stuff, and there's a lot of Instagram girls that are putting out content that uh, many would deem as too TMI, but the market sure likes it and if it works for them, that's how you have to live your life. And so you do you, you do you. There is nobody deciding besides you and the market, that's the way it should be, and there's always this nice balance. And if you're fortunate, if you're lucky, what you're willing to put out, they're willing to consume and are happy with it, and that's the Mendoza line we're all looking for.
Hey there, Gary. This is Matthew Adams over at Hilton Head House of Jerky. Hey, I want to let you know I tried that thing with uh, telling everybody thank you with a video on Twitter, and it has worked better than good. The problem I'm having right now is I've got so many new tweets coming in and some new people following me, it's becoming a little overwhelming. How do you handle that? Thanks. Take, great, take care and have a great day. So this is an interesting question, House of Jerky. Um... <laughs> this is a very interesting question. You know, the, the the truth is, I can never like fake the funk on this show. Like, like I think one of the things that works for me is like my reactions are always my reactions. So since I've already seen this video, I'm not as pissed as I was three weeks ago or whenever the hell I saw it. Where I literally, House of Jerky, and I love you, uh, literally wanted to punch you directly in your mouth because this really pissed me off. Because like. Like, Jesus Christ, like, like, hey, help me fix my business and make my business better. Cool, here, do this, awesome, my business is better, but now there's like too much of this, I mean, it is so insane. Like, you know, and, and again, you're such a lovely dude that I don't want, like, I'm doing this never just, by the way, I'm never answering these questions just for the person at hand, it is the collective answer. And so, I hope, and I mean this, my man, I hope you're being tongue-in-cheek with me and you just wanted to get on the show or what, I, I really hope, because if, because if you're not being tongue-in-cheek with me, you're, you're an insane loser. Anybody and anybody, anybody who uh, has a problem with too many things going well um, are, are pre-wired for failure. And that hurts. Like, and I really, the truth is, the reason I probably took the show and like it said, bring it, I can taste that that's not your case, but I do think that there's many people listening and watching that are the case. And the thought that you could ever complain about success is so insane to me. And, and listen, I, you know, maybe I have a visceral reaction to this because business associates have done this with me in my career and I can't, there's so much to complain about that is valid if you're willing to, I mean, this show, as you can tell, I'm not even interested in doing that at all. Uh, you know, I've said in this show, the biggest thing I admire in the world is my mom's inability to complain. Uh, it's something I'm massively proud of. I really try not to do it. Uh, and the thought to complain about, hey, you gave me a tremendous piece of a business strategy, stick with me here, for fucking free, stick with me here, it worked, good things are happening to me, good things are happening to me, and now there's too much good things happening to me, help me reconcile this good thing that's happening to me. That is bonker shit USA. <laughs> that, is bon that is insane, and I right here, lying in the sand on this show to you Vayner Nation, I'm telling you that is a line I'm not allowing you to cross. I am not allowing you, you, any of you ever, in your life, ever, I'm choking it the fuck out. You are unallowed, if you want to be homies, friends, even borderline acquaintances, you are not allowed to complain about success. Let me, let me help you with your problem. Shut your fucking business down. Because if you're gonna complain about good things happening, you've lost. That's insane. Complain when you're like down to your last penny. Not when you have too many customers. You know what you need to do? Stop bullshitting. Sleep less. Fucking don't watch TV. Like, I don't know, like, don't make a video with Gary Vee. Answer somebody's fucking question. Got it? I found it. I did find it. I found it late. I found that place late. I found the place late. And House of Jerky, you know I love you, but like, and, and again, my proxy is I have to think like, you know, you're enjoying the process, but like, you can't complain about success. I mean, if you're complaining about success, just shut it all down. That's it? I don't <laughs> Got it. You need this. I get it. Fans to Fans asks, Gary Vee, your Facebook numbers don't reflect how influential you are. How do you explain that to clients? Um, this is a good question. You know, it's funny. I mean, like, I think people, I think people are lost. Let me explain. Um, here's how I explain it to clients. I assume what you're saying is, Gary, you've built a personal brand and you only have 336,000 followers on Facebook and there's a lot of people that have way more and your influence is bigger and like, and I like you, fans, fans being very nice, and like, I think you're bigger than that. I see other people that have 400,000 or 180,000 that are way less than you. How do you explain that? I explain it very simply. My goal in life is not to amass Facebook fans. I explain it by saying, look at all these people that have way more social media followers who sell nine books when their book comes out. 
and I sell hundreds of thousands, I explain and say, look, you know how I tell you I'm good at building businesses? Look at this building called, business called VaynerMedia that you know, three years ago did three million and is gonna do 65 million. That's good, right? I explain it because a top line, how many followers do you have on social media proxy is straight bullshit. You want more fucking Twitter followers? Go to ebay.com and buy them. And you can trick them. Like, I can go buy a bunch of Facebook pages and merge it. Like, it, cause it doesn't mean anything. Cause a top line awareness number has nothing to do with the thing that I care about the most in the world, which is selling stuff. Show me it all the way through. Show it all the way through. Because the amount of people that can create perception, it's like being pretty. Cool, you're pretty but are you a good person? Because pretty only gets you so far. Cool, you have 500,000 fans on Facebook. And if you're saying that you're a business leader, are you making money? Do you sell stuff? Like are you good like that? And so um, I explain it very easily as you can tell because I promise you that Pepsi and Toyota and Unilever and Budweiser and all those characters that higher Vayner Media could care less about how many followers the CEO has. They care a lot more about selling shit. That was pretty solid. Yeah. Meerkat thinks that's right, right? Yeah. I know it's on a little bit of a delay, Andrew, but yeah. they think that's correct. I agree. Yeah. Thanks. Question of the day. Stunwin, yep. since you've made your glorious return, you get to ask the question of the day. What video game are you playing right now? At least you're consistent. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the support of the show. If you've gotten this far, it means that you're pretty passionate about the show and I'm gonna ask for a right hook. Vayner Nation, serious right hook alert. Uh, I, uh, need reviews on iTunes because even though top line numbers don't matter, as I said, they do matter because they're a proxy. That's why you asked the show. Question the show. It's all the clouds and the dirt, right? And so if you're listening, if you're watching, it would mean the world to me whether you give me a one star because you think the show's a piece of crap or you give me five but I'm looking for reviews. We need like a, a, a right hook graphic. Vayner Nation, serious right hook alert. Do something good. You can ask questions, I'll keep answering them.